Hello and welcome. Today on the show, we're going to be trying out old hometown favorite. We have Heinz 57 Sauce here coming to you today. Really glad you came. Hope you stick around. It's going to be a fun one, I promise. This is Sauce Spoken. Getting back into the swing of things, we are Sauce Spoken. Your podcast delivering some not at all comedic information, pseudo information, pseudo science, pseudo intellectualism uh, about some of your favorite sauces, dips, and condiments. I'm here, your host, Big PPAP. Uh, with me is our guest, E. Oh, we played or Jennifer other co host, <laughs> yeah, E. And then I we also I... have Tori. Oh, oh, we also have. <laughs> no, E. Let, let it rip, man. We also have Tori, the other co-host. At any rate, uh, I'm I'm really excited. Everyone came by and listened to us here today. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, we really hope you enjoy the show. We really enjoy doing it. So I think we all had a bit of rough rough weeks this week. Does that sound right? My yeah. week started off rough, but uh, it tapered off after Wednesday. Really, yeah. what happened? What happened Monday and Tuesday? Why did it taper off? What? Go into detail. I got my shit done. <laughs> <laughs> it you took basically, till, it you've took been constipated Wednesday. for two weeks. You said right. <laughs> That was not no. That was not it. I got drawings done. We had we just said we had a prototype, and I had to go out by Wednesday. So I worked two eleven-hour days, Monday and Tuesday. Okay, it was nope. big for all, for everyone. But I'm genuinely interested in your week. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So we got got my drawings done. Yeah. Other than that, it was it was an easy breezy week. The rest of it, because got the the hard stuff knocked out in the beginning, and uh, yeah, it was all right. The rest of the week. Yeah. I uh, don't know. You guys had some rough weeks. What's up, Tori? How, how was your week? I, you know, I, not really a standout week. Um, there's been some some things, some drama at work. I think it's best that I leave it at that. And uh, it's I think you should elaborate. No, I'm good. <laughs> um, it, it's certainly interesting to watch, but you know, hey, that's um, uh, well, that's that's that. But yeah, I mean, my, my week was considerably easy, all things being considered, with with the exception of the last ten minutes. Of me coming over to to see you here, I, I it was a bit of a train wreck for me to get over here. My poor cats that I I've, I know I've mentioned previously, they um, they were puking and uh, I worked from home, so naturally I was. You didn't shower, and that's why they were puking. Well, right? no, okay. no, no. Um, of course, no. Uh, well, they, and and they weren't just sick, like sick from food or something. Like this is kind of. No, Tori like, famously does not wear a shirt when he works from home. So. Oh, well, I barely wear pants. You just have one of those little stripper collars with the tie hanging from it. So when you just do like above the neckline. That's when your, I'm cold. For your Okay, yeah. yeah. The nipple tie to cover them. Keep yeah, them warm. And that's, yeah, you, you're going to be lucky. But yeah, I mean, the, the cats are old. So I, they're, I, they're, I think they're prone to. Bottling. How old are they? Ancient. Uh, yeah, we went we went through this. They're, they're, they're like dinosaurs. I know. It just felt like a joke set up, but. I had to take it. Yeah, Any chance enough. to interrupt you, as we've discussed. Oh, yeah. I, well, I know you'll jump on that like like nobody's business. I'm curious to hear what the listeners think of that. You chime in and let you let people know, let me know what you guys think about me constantly interrupting. But anyway, so your cats are okay now? I guess. I mean, they're old, so they, I guess they're prone to puking. You know, puking is no thing. They were puking at 3.30 this morning, you right. know, so I had to get up. I, I think that if you really wanted to get up for something, by the way, set your alarm clock to the sound of your cat puking ah. or a dog puking. I, you know, I don't know. Gets you out of bed in a hurry. It, it certainly wakes me up and it's, hmm. it's very distinct. I don't know. I mean, if, uh, if I, I'm going to market that, I'm going to make a nap. But at any rate, <laughs> I've been yakking like crazy. How has your week been? Uh, pretty good. Actually, now that you, well, no, it was terrible, but <laughs> <laughs> that's my canned American response. Oh, it was pretty good. No, it wasn't. Fuck, it wasn't. Anyways, uh, the one thing I wanted to say about the cat puke, though, was that uh, I was reading a thing about cat puking the other day because one of my kitties has a bit of a puking thing. And what they say online is basically, puking is normal for cats. It's only if it becomes like frequent, regular, chronic puking like for several, you know, an extended period of time. That's when it's an issue. And I was a little alarmed to see that. But apparently cats just, they're pukey little fucks. They love doing it, I guess. Yeah, and, and my two re-rees, they take turns. Ah. Which is pleasant. Yeah. So, I mean, the the whole... <laughs> One gets the other started. <laughs> the whole chronic thing can't even stick. Yeah. Like, it was uh, it was my boy, Mr. C, um, the, this morning, Connor. Uh -huh. um, and it was Milo this afternoon. That's and, nice. And who knows who it's going to be the next time. And it may be... It may not be for another week. It may not be for another two months. It may be... I've already been done. You know? Well, it, I imagine... It, is it tied into the, like, the 
hair, and I know nothing about uh, pet ownership at all. I just want to. <laughs> I think sometimes it can be, but sometimes it's just. I, I really don't think there's. A, I don't think there's even a reason. I think it's just they ate a little bit too much, or they ate a little fast, or mm-hmm. they had a little upset stomach. Yep. You know, they just cats don't have medicine, so that's like if they're feeling sick, they only have one option. You know, it's just puke. Puke. So my little puke orange boy. It seems like if he. This is crazy, but if he purrs too intensely. It'll work him work him up. I've noticed that that before. Huh. I really hope people aren't trying to listen to this while they're eating. I was just yeah. thinking about this. I mean, there's a sauce podcast, you know. I'm assuming people are doing it in the car or work or something like that. Probably not eating dinner. It's a sad life if you're listening to us while you're eating dinner. That's... Yeah. I, I get help. Wow. That's all I can say. <laughs> we'll, we'll append the uh, suicide hotline. To we're accept. open for invite, though. I mean, so if, if you're willing to listen to us, we're more than happy to come to your house and have dinner. You just let us know what you're having. And, as long as you live we'll be there. within Brady. listening, within the, uh, what do you want to say, 15-minute drive? That's kind of my limit for this kind of thing. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Let's talk live turkey. in the Pittsburgh area, yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't, I don't want to give all the weirdos an open invite. I don't want to do that shit, but. Anyways, getting back to cat puke, we're normal people talking about cat puke. I, we are kitty enthusiasts, we I are, think. We're going to have to post. Well, he, well he's not. At least yeah. 66% of us are. He famously hates cats. We're I not going to get into some of cats. his more violent oh, stories, but he is a cat <sighs> hater that's from right. from way back. That's right. We can't talk about that in the podcast. No. You know, I could talk about it. Well, I made that good. He, used, you he better used to be in the Cat Clux clan. He used to oh, Jesus. burn crosses in cats' yards. Oddly enough, there was something I found interesting this week was people were posting <laughs> on the neighborhood next door app. I'm sure people have probably heard it about the stray cat that is lunging out at people while they're out walking their dogs, lung- lunging and scratching people's legs, scratching people's dogs. The thing is like a feral cat. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, God forbid you talk bad about a cat. It sounds like Tori would like him. Tori likes that kind of cat. That's true. I do like a, a wild man. I but- like a frisky boy. My little, my little brown one's a wild man. I know you know that. Yeah. E, I know you've been on the receiving end. I have the scars to prove yeah. he's a yeah. wild man. On, on that, um, he doesn't. Uh... There was a menace around my way. It was coined the red fox, and it was this big orange cat, and it would it was it would terrorize my little kitties because I have a ledge, both I have a bay window, of course. You right. Know, so there's an inside and outside ledge, and this red fox would sit on the outside, and my little brown boy would be on the other side, and they would, it would be, you know like murder, bloody murder hmm. happening. Sure. So it turns out that one of our neighbors, who is a, a, a philanthropist towards all this, she loves animals, goes crazy for them. She captures this cat, you know, wants to get it checked out, fixed ultimately, you uh-huh. know, wants to get it neutered. The vet said, oh, it's a girl. It's already been spayed. spayed. It's a girl. I mean, I, I've never seen a girl cat, Shameful. especially fixed, to be that crazy aggressive. And I've, yeah. I, you know, I haven't seen it since. That's true. Now that Gripping you story, it. I know. If you, if you are a pet owner, do the responsible thing, like my friend AP here, and put your cat on a leash if you want it to be outside, or I you, you know, say put it down, <laughs> <laughs> or or if you don't want it, yeah, put it up for adoption or get you know properly get rid of it. Don't just abandon it. I mean, it's not. I don't blame you know the animal here. I'm blaming humans who disrespect mistreat them, and sure. mistreat and and you know. Well, to be fair, I do put my one cat out on a leash. That's not for. Me being responsible, that's just because in a new environment, I don't want her wandering out on the road. I mean, she's more than comfortable walking off on her own, and I would let her. I just wanted her to kind of get used to the area first. I'm not a... I think letting your pet cat roam free is probably okay. Now, dogs, that's a little draw the line at dogs, especially bigger dogs. Cats, though, I don't think they're hurting anything. Unless they're strays swiping Unless at people. Unless they're strays swiping at people causing, yeah, you know. Uh, hey, you said you had scars from karma. I mean, a cat is not without... It's still a wild animal and still can, can cause damage. Yeah, huh. I've never seen I'll put it. his ass in next week. He comes at me like, it's, it's lights out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think most cats are attacking strangers passerby, though. I think that's just, I think that's a bad, one bad cat. I don't think that's a normal cat. I mean, here. in my boy's defense, he grew up in a freshman college dormitory. Right. Oh, I, I know Carmine's got some history. Yeah, I mean, he you can't, sad. He can't not be crazy. Right. You the know, initiation I, he had to go through alone. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. My heart goes out for the poor boy. Uh, the gal I was dating at the time, that was her cat, of course. You know, like most cats, they get dumped right. on their current owners that love them more than anyone right. ever would. But my, boy, my boy, he pisses me off like hell, but he breaks my heart. Right. I like him, too. I mean, it is. I like a cat with some spirit. I like a cat that likes to fight back a little bit. I think that's kind of entertaining. But And to be fair, we are in his territory when he attacks. It's not like he's coming into my house attacking me. I'm going into his house, and he's just 
sitting there defending himself in his mind, I'm sure. Uh, absolutely. Hey, I like Carmine. I like Milo. I don't even fucking like pretend cats. to like cats, you piece of shit. I do. Bye, well, I hate cats. What's your KD ratio? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, let's stay away from this topic. They used to call him, back in high school, they called him Cat Shetty E. <laughs> For chopping. None of this shit is true. <laughs> For chopping them left and right. We went off on a hard line today. We usually start off a little kinder than this. I think so we, we wound ourselves up a little bit earlier doing some test intro stuff. Actually, we were just we were still wrapping up your week before you were so rudely interrupted. Was there anything else or just the cats puking? Um, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Boy, what a derailment, too. Yeah. I, I, it went from... The the mishap that I that I experienced within ten minutes worth of time right. <laughs> to that to that diatribe. No, I mean outside of that, my week's been good. You know the the dr- the dramatics at work I find entertaining. You know I, I put on my happy face like the Joker and uh-huh. you know, I just carry on as long as the, as long as the check cash and then burn right. the world down. Right. That's what you do. Yeah, that, that that's that's fine with me and uh, and yeah and I was just uh, mid pass off. You know and and your week before we got on the cat puke. Oh, no, that's true. Well, I had to chime in with my cat puke. I only have the one that pukes. The other one never pukes. Hmm. She's a little bit older, though, and I don't know if that has something to do with her or not, but she does. She has some other interesting quirks. Qu- quirks. Quirks and quirks. No, she does. Uh, she's the. She's pretty normal. She's the decoration kitty is what I call her because she likes to just sit there and look cute. My other black cat is the crazy one, but the white one has some uh, interesting things she does. The puking is one of them. The other thing she'll do in the middle of the night, she'll just kind of... How are we still? How are we still talking about cats? How was your week? People like cats, piece of shit. That's the thing we're trying to tell you. Not everyone cats are fucking huge hates hit. cats. Yeah, News you're flash. over here like I like cats too, and we're talking about it for ten minutes. You're like fucking move on with the cats. Anyways, you need a little meow. I'm going to continue telling no, my cute cat story. I hope I can replicate the sound through the mic because she gets in the middle of the night, and if the people go to bed and there's no one there that she can see, she starts making this terrible caterwauling sound like. That's a miserable noise. I know exactly what. <laughs> no, she doesn't do that. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> now, twenty minutes of that, we could really go. <laughs> yeah, damn, we'll have a million listeners in no time. <laughs> He's turning bright red. TG's giving me the cut it out sound. You're just I... making more work for me, really. Anyway, so no, getting away from the cat shit. I had a little bit of an incident with Verizon FiOS this week, which was a whole debacle. About once a year, I have a problem with them, and I the only reason I have Verizon. The only reason I went with the Fios was I used to have Comcast, and I don't remember exactly what they did, but they managed to piss me off so much I swore I'd never go to Comcast Xfinity ever again. No long story short, they had to come out like three different times because they are of their incompetence, and it's impossible to ever get anyone a hold a hold of anyone. You call and you're on hold for three hours, so that would contribute to a less than a pleasant experience at my work. Yeah, you certainly had a had a rough week. At home, yeah. yeah. That was a multiple multiple day issue for you for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a week long. And then, you know, work has its issues. And we're pretty slow on work right now. We haven't mentioned coronavirus yet this episode. Usually oh, wow. we touch on that at some point, yeah. which I don't think it's really related, but I'm not blaming on it. Really? Actually, I really don't. I mean, it might be kind of a delayed effect. That's what but, I think uh, it is for us. We're, we're, we're I work as, you know, in a manufacturing business right. and and we are we were doing okay at the beginning of the pan you know pandemic breakout right. and whatnot everyone else was immediately laid off in the service industry but we were still manufacturing chugging along and in fact we even uh, ramped up to try and help out with some of the essential required needs yeah now it's just really tapered off <laughs> yeah we're pretty <clears throat> terribly slow right now Tori, has your workload been affected at all? I can't, probably not. No, thankfully insurance is recession proof, more or less. I mean, as as long as there is a dollar moving via commerce or someone in an office building somewhere, that baby needs to be insured. So, uh, you know, if, if they're... As much as I hate to say it, and I, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a necessary racket, you know, it's yeah. a necessary evil. Got a good scam going. But not yeah. if you're in auto insurance, really. They made news because they gave back millions of dollars because people weren't on the road and people were calling up their insurance companies being like, hey, nobody's driving. Why are we paying you? And they're like, oh, um, uh, yeah, you're right. We'll give you back your premiums. To be fair, you really don't need auto insurance anyways. You drive two minutes to work. I do. You don't really need to drive. You have a bicycle we've been trying to dig on you to repair that you've. I should just bike to work. Absolutely. <laughs> you mounted it on your wall when you moved in and it hasn't moved since. Of course, I just said one of my banned words now. I've been that that happened this week. I'm pretty sure. I think that was this week. I cannot longer say should, would, or could. 
Yeah, that's true. I don't know if we've discussed that in the podcast at all, but you are E, would have, should have, could have. That's your middle name, I believe. Pretty much, so. pretty much. I just like to consider all possibilities. And do none I of them. I know that I can and do <laughs> none of them. I've been taking a lot of naps this week. I feel very good. Jeez. <laughs> that's the only thing. I, I, I hope we've said this before. You should not be napping that much. I know we've said that in person, at least on a, every time we see you, but I don't know if we've mentioned that in a podcast before. How old, are you, how old are you? You tell for the podcast. Let's let's let the listeners chime in with: Is the daily multi-hour nap normal for a person of this age? Let's, let's for one hundred and thirty-three. I'm excellent. <laughs> let's all take a guess on how old he is and drum roll, please. How old? You can subtract the hundred. <laughs> yeah, daily naps for this dude. Thirty-three. Not daily. Well, this week maybe. Man, I'm way too much of a neb shit for naps. I I, I always feel like I'm missing something. You know what I mean? I go, I, 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 when the hell am I going to go to sleep? The sun's still up. I mean, I, there's, right. I mean, at the very least, I could just there's veg mischief. out. Yeah, I could veg out, play video games. Like I could putz around in the yard. There's always something I could be doing. I, I, I don't know. Naps, I have to be sick, sick. Yeah, that's kind of where I fall. Either sick or dramatically undercaffeinated, one or the other. Mm. Yeah, the caffeine don't bother me. I, I'll go two, three days at a clip without any coffee and it don't oh, bother me at all. I'm a fiend on the caffeine. Hmm. I got to slam on that shit every day. Wow. Probably slam on it. I like, what do you drink? Energy drinks and everything? No, no. I, well, I used to drink. I used to get a lot of caffeine in me. I've tapered back off for a while. I got to the point where I was drinking two cups of tea a day. Wow. And that was it, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. That's not a lot of caffeine at all. No, that wasn't cutting <laughs> it for me. I recently started making some some cold brew. I got on another hipster trend. Oh, uh, nice. Have you guys seen that, that meme with the blonde well, this popular right now in August of 2020? It won't be in a week or two. So the blonde dude who says, okay, you know, the two girls above the line, the one blonde and the one dark-haired girl, and then the... Two the blonde, cartoons. Yeah, yeah, the two blonde dudes on the bottom and, mm-hmm. you know, the girl says... And, they're the, and that, that's the manly depiction at the bottom? Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's, it's supposed to be, like, different, like, the, takes the Chad. On, yeah, but that's a, essentially my... I'm certain I know what you're talking about. The, the, the blonde has, like, a flowery dress. The, oh, maybe, yeah. That could be true. And the, the dark-haired girl's, like, kind of, like, like goth, goth. Aesthetic. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier that, the whole point of this very belabored point here was that I think I bear a resemblance to the dudes in the bottom, their aesthetic with the blonde hair and the beard. That, yes. that was the whole point of this yes. ramble. So That was a tangent. Yeah. And I'm saying yes because that's the whole point. Exactly. You to, got it. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. That's what I was going for. Yes. Yes. Which I don't really understand the point of that meme. I don't know how that originated, but. I don't know. I guess that blonde guy with the beard is somehow superior to the person who has who holds that opinion above them. Well, I think it was kind of just, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Depending just, on what opinion you hold. I just took it as generic girl's perspective versus generic dude's perspective or something. Hmm. I yeah. have not seen the meme. Yeah, you're too busy napping, you piece of shit. Anyways, so... I don't think you're missing too much. Yeah, you're not. It wasn't that good of a meme. I don't know. I'm surprised it's been around that long. Yeah. Um, like, I don't get memes at all. I just don't even get the There's really nothing to get, bro. It's, yeah. just, it's just surface level stupidity. Yeah. yeah. yeah for that, people much. like us with low brain cell counts. Yeah. Drink really too much. Really short attention spans. Yeah. It was actually pretty funny. My boss today said that the people out in the shop were midget intellect. And I was like, anyways, yeah, I never heard the <laughs> phrase before, but it was kind of apropos. I mean, well, I just it like, sounds like you're calling little people stupid, which I don't think <laughs> was your intention. No, that's no, what no. It sounds it's like the intellect being small, a small intellect, a midget intellect. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the intent, I think. That uh, seems problematic. But yeah, okay. to say the I've least, heard it's... of the exact opposite, but in a sarcastic sense, like you call somebody a mental giant. Oh, oh right. With the, you know, of course, the implication that they're a bit of a dummy. Right. <laughs> I see. You're going on vacation soon. You're That's right. exciting. Yeah. yeah. I, um, You're taking I'm, off TG. tomorrow, right? I'm <laughs> taking off tomorrow in the morning. Uh, yeah. It, uh, we're, I'm, I'm all packed up. My wife is not, which uh, I, mm. I, I take a personal pride in. Right. Um, but, but she didn't want you to be out too late because you still need to pack, right? That was the issue. I guess. I I, I got to load shit in the car. Ah. Um, I guess that's the last time we went on a, or one of the times we went on a road trip, she was very, this is before we were married or nothing, you right. know, and she was very excited to go. And I don't blame her, you know, and I was too, but I got super drunk the night before ah. and, and she had to come and wake me up and she was all pissed off. And then we got in my, and I had a Mercury Milan at the time and I went to get in it and the son of a bitch wouldn't start. Ah. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. But whatever. And that was related to your drinking, obviously, right? Obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was I blacked out drunk. That was your yeah. fault. Had the whole engine left, apart. Left yeah. the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Rebuilt the carburetor in my sleep. 
where was that to that trip that was uh around your boys' neck of the woods that was geneva on the lake ohio oh yeah very yeah. good yeah we steer I, I actually steered you on that one a little bit and that I, was a good one I steered you kind of wrong weather wise or for the i guess it was before they were fully open sometimes they're a little sketch on when they exactly open <laughs> yeah but... yeah we had it in our mind that uh somehow cinco de mayo was the the landmark day in ah. in uh what's that northwestern ohio right, northeastern right, right. ohio you know somehow cinco de mayo is, is, a, is a big marker like well, what the hell i mean yeah it's may 15 18 something right. you know we're going after cinco de mayo it's got to be a party up there right and boy it was a ghost town i mean it, yeah. it, it was almost silly you know was, was there like, snow on the ground still no 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 snow it was very pleasant weather wise but you nice. know we were walked down the strip and you know there's the water slide that's of course fenced in and, right you know and all this and, you know and we went to like I think two or three wineries and well, the wine up there is worth going for on its own, but I will say that we should make a little trip back up there in the nicer weather. I don't know how it's going on right now, pandemic wise, but uh, where are you going? Where are you going this time on vacation? There, we are headed to the Pocono Mountains in uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania. Gonna, gonna give a poke in the poke. Yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, well, for us, we would head up 79 and then probably hang a big left on 80 and then spend the, the vast majority of the time. I, I want to say it's like five hours, maybe six hours. Oh, okay. It's further east than I thought. Okay. A left? Excuse on me. A, a oh, right, right on 80. Oh, You've got to okay. head east. Yeah, my mistake. I, was, I would say, I thought you were talking about going back to Geneva on the Lake because that is oh, how no, you that would was go my there. Bad. No, that we're definitely, how you could go there. We're definitely headed east. Anyway, so we got off. we got way off topic as far as food is concerned. Kind of did a little sneak preview of this accidentally last week during the uh, Cholula episode. We Absolutely. were talking about hot sauces and tori tori went a little bit uh went a little far and took a little sneak preview of the sauce i'm gonna interrupt you right now because that heinz 57 sauce i would equate that to ambrosia for the mortals in comparison to that dog dropping wow. nonsense that we had last week i mean that was wow. that was a gift i'm not gonna oh I, I, we'll get to the rating soon no. enough. yeah you know, i don't want to spoil my own surprise no, you ain't interrupting me again <laughs> You know, that was a treat, <laughs> comparatively speaking. That that Chipotle sauce, that is for the birds. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sit here and tell you all up and down that it was an accident, but I need something to cleanse need my something. palate from the motor oil that, wow. Well, first of all, it was an accident. You thought this was fucking hot sauce because it's orange. In any case, we won't bury the lead anymore here. We are talking, as Tori mentioned, about Heinz 57 sauce. You want to give us a little breakdown on the bottle here, E? It's a pretty classic uh, sauce, pretty classic bottle. It's glass. It's got a red cap. It's got Heinz typical emblem. Actually, it kind of looks like the well, picture. You paint it. the picture. Well, it's a typical bottle. You know, it's a bottle and it's bottle shaped and it's kind of got the typical logo and it's got the typical sauce inside. You guys know what a sauce is. No, I mean, like, really, I, you know, it's got this wonderful orange sauce inside it. These golden, orange, yellow uh, labeling on it. Big big 57 sauce written on it and oddly enough i was just about to start to say that it looks like you know the the, the pa logo the keystone yeah, the yeah keystone that's what logo. i just wrote down here did, did, did you like did you they see have, my notes here no i did not see your notes but it looks like they have the keystone logo on it which i mean we talked about heinz you know, that's exactly what it is being in pa i never made that oh, connection before i never made that association either that's oh my god very you know clever. heavens forbid i eventually get around to describing something i think you're snooping my notes e no, I didn't notice. That's okay. Search. If you notice, um, interestingly enough, when you're on, uh, say, like Route 28, that's a, a state route in PA, all the signs are that shape. And I think Ohio yeah. is the same way. Yeah, they do. They do. Well, theirs are a little, theirs don't work quite as well because the shape of Ohio is not a good shape for uh, the sign. The keystone is much more. As a good PA boy, it sort of threw me off because I thought it was like, is that a heart? No. Right. I, I, you know, I. It well, does kind of look like a heart. When I went far west to Columbus, my, my big trip to Columbus, Ohio, you know, <laughs> way, way. going west. I think when I was a kid, I used to think it was actually like an anatomical heart, and I didn't understand what it, what the deal was. Being being from, I was a dumb kid, dumb and fat. We discussed this before. So haven't outgrown it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. And now I'm big and dumb and fat. <laughs> So it's Heinz 57 sauce adds zest to your chicken and steak and pork. But it's nice that it's glass. We all, we all agree that we like a glass bottle. It doesn't have a wooden cap like our uh, Cholula sauce last. Good point. Good observation. I like I like that that wooden cap. I think it's you know, it, it looked neat. It was, it was oh, yeah. something you know, stood out. I think it's fitting for what you... <laughs> that sauce was hideous. Yeah, you <laughs> love that sauce so much. <laughs> However, um, I, I don't know. I, I thought it fit the bill for, for what you get. Sadly, it, it sucked. I mean, but... We're not tasting the lid. No, it it probably right. would have tasted better, though, frankly. It looked wow. better. I do think there is something to be said for sauces that are in a 
glass bottle. I mean, not only does it kind of feel Absolutely. more substantial, you yep. feel like you're getting your money's worth, but I think that also you're not getting those microplastics in it, which I don't know if they affect the flavor or not, but I definitely think that's a possibility. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's something charming. There's something old timey about a glass. I, I, mean, I know I've mentioned this before, but the, like something in a glass jar of like mustard, you get that. You get oh the, yeah, you get the ting of your butter knife as you go in for a big old scoop for your sandwich or something. It's endearing. I don't know. Yeah. I, I love it. And it's utilitarian too. If you're ever looking for like an improvised weapon in your house, you're not going to go to the plastic ketchup bottle. You're going to go to the Heinz 57 bottle. That's all I'm saying. That's an, that's an interesting. What made you go for that? No, like we were saying, you're not getting those uh, <laughs> microplastics or any other dangerous thing. I think most, you know, plastic bottles these days are BPA and all those other stupid letters, you know, worrisome letters that are free. <laughs> well, they're they're free from the worrisome things that they're willing to tell you about right now. You know, in the future, it's hard to say, you know, what that's going to be. That's fair enough. But on the topic of glass bottles, and I do think it's uh, in an like an elevated you know, it's classier, and I, I do hate ketchup in a glass bottle just because ah. it's so much harder to get out. Yep. And this Heinz 57 sauce has a much, I forget if it's lower or higher viscosity. I yeah, higher. I can never remember either, but I was <laughs> going to say, you know, you hadn't touched on that yet, but I did want to mention the viscosity of it. It is a thinner sauce, whatever that whatever that is, higher or lower viscosity. I said we're a bunch of dummies, but it does pour substantially better out of a glass bottle than the ketchup does. Yes. That sauce is more watery. There we go. It's got more water in it, as we say. <laughs> We're going to go right up our houses. E, you made mention that you don't know how to get Heinz ketchup out of the glass bottle. Allow me to let you in on a little secret from the pros. If you look real close on the bottle, and, and, well, probably maybe not on the side of that particular bottle, but a uh, ketchup bottle, you know, the classic, classic shape. There's a, a little 57 that's embossed into the glass. You have that upside down, and you give it a nice big knock with your, uh, what would they call that, the, the ball the, of your palm there. Yeah, that, yeah. Sure, that sounds good. Like right underneath your thumb, you know, that, yeah. that nice meaty section. Yeah. Right. You give it a good knock with that and you'll knock anything straight loose. A little secret of the pros, my man, I'm telling you. You don't huh. need to put a knife up there, no nothing. You hit, the, it's a little tiny 57. You look closely, it's on every bottle. Give that a little smack and you'll be uh, right as rain for your for, for your French fries or your uh, whatever. I wasn't familiar with that technique. It's I guaranteed. Was, I found out, as a kid, I found out a new way, which is you just, you open it and you put your whole mouth over the over the opening and just suck. And that I found that works pretty well. You need a tap. Like they have at, at the Sam's Clubs, you know. Yeah, there like we pressurized go. Pressurized ketchup. Yeah, actually, yeah, nitrogenated. I'm a big fan of that nitro. Nitro coffee. Stuff. Yeah, so. nitro coffee or nitro like Guinness. Beer, I'm a big fan right? of that kind of stuff. I could go for a nitro sauce. Yeah, nice you are a hipster weirdo, Creamy aren't sauce. You? That'd be good. Shit. I wish oh, I knew I'm sure I was someone's into. doing it. Someone's not, making well, some nitrogen infused sauces. I know of well, it. Well, it'd be like a short. You, you, the thing about the sauces is you're not drinking an entire bottle of sauce in one sitting like you are in a beer. Is so, that that weird, like, gastro? Well, it's like that really thin head on it, you know, where it almost kind of looks like a, almost a solid head as opposed to, like, the bubbly carbonated. You talking beers? Talking what beer. are you talking? talking beer Guinness. And He's talking about Guinness. Beer and and coffee. Coffee. Yeah, Guinness. It's got that Guinness head on it. Yeah. Okay. You don't know, um, you know what we're talking about? Nah, man, I'm good. I'm not, nah. Smaller <laughs> bubbles from okay. nitrogen yeah. than from carbon dioxide. I'm bag so, on that. I'm not interested. I think you were kind of getting at a point there that last week when you tried the sauce prematurely, I like to serve the sauces as they come straight from the store. So if it's from the refrigerator, I like to make sure it is refrigerated. I ruined it. If it's room temperature, I like to serve at room temperature for tasting purposes for our viewers. Good point. And this that, bottle I mean, was spoiled last week. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't spoiled. He actually got to try it warm, and we had it refrigerated. How right. about that? And it's it was, interesting. It was pre-opened though, because you oh, didn't. My. You didn't like it last week when you tried it on a tortilla chip. Yeah, I, I, well, in my defense, I'm not sure in which order I tried. I tried the sauces. Uh, right. I can tell you for certain that if I tried that Heinz 57 sauce after I tried either one of those. Uh, puddle water in a, on a hot Delicious. afternoon sauces that you guys like that chipotle Good amazing stuff. hot stuff. dishwater garbage <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm certain that put me in a very cranky mood so uh <laughs> i'm i'm I, I don't know in which order I, I don't know if that makes any damn sense but i think my opinion may change henceforth in any case you did this week we did try these on some hot chicken nuggets that were freshly prepared on time and they were still warm while we ate them for the first time a podcast first Chicken nuggets AP. adequately prepared. 
He just likes to take his dicks. Local chef, (laughs) Eric. And he likes to call me a chef. That's true. I don't know. Well, I I think you may have assumed that title. Taken taken the the title from me. What is his house? I guess that makes most sense. But um, I think we all, I think you liked it a little bit better this week. And uh, I'll be honest that my main introduction to this sauce was from Waffle Houses. Uh, that blows my mind. I don't even know why a Waffle House would. Well, I guess they do serve. They have steaks there. I've never been to a Waffle House, and right. I and I, I would very much like to go. I liken it to a a greasier spoon than what you would get at Eaton Park. Oh, it's it, to me. You have to have your expectations set correctly. They can't be too high. Oh, right. It's like really good if you're looking for that kind of thing, especially if you had a couple drinks or something. Oh, I'm certain. Yeah, I really am regularly. Or if you even if you want to go out for a really cheap, you know, dinner that's of decent quality. I used to, I wanted to try a sauce. One of the things I started trying it on was some uh, just sausage biscuits and gravy, and I put a couple little drops on there just for some zest, and Ooh. I felt like that really added something to an otherwise pretty plain dish. That's really bold. I, I don't know. I mean, call me plain, call me boring, whatever you want, but okay. I mean, you give me a halfway decent, a nice peppery bowl of biscuits and gravy. I know you hear me on this. Oh, yeah. I mean, but uh, but I, I'm adventurous. Like, I, you know, if I was sitting having breakfast with, AP and he put a couple dabs in his and he goes, oh, that's good. I'd be down to try it. Well, I would. I wouldn't be. I would not have come up with the thought myself, probably, but I would not be afraid to try it. I I would almost approach that like a like a sushi a sushi sushi sushi, sushi chef would. I mean, you know, I mean, if I make a fire plate of biscuits and gravy, you know, and I'm giving uh-huh. it a taste, and then I'm you know putting put my heart salt. And I see some jamoke put <laughs> Heinz 57 sauce on it. I'd have half a mind to uh, blacken maybe both of his eyes. Oh, okay. Well, like I said, to be clear, this was at a Waffle House. This was not homemade by some grandmother, you know, from the old country. This was lowest common denominator, appeals to the most people for the cheapest price Waffle House food. They're not it is not riddled with flavor on its own. I mean, it's pretty bland. It doesn't say a whole lot that you needed that you needed a steak sauce on oh, biscuits. No, no, I didn't need it. I chose to try it because I had never had it before, and I didn't know what to try it on. I didn't want to order something specifically to try it on. I find that odd though, because it says right on the cover. <laughs> yeah, but I was eating breakfast. I didn't okay, have. Okay. I didn't, you didn't have, have chicken. A steak in front of me. I didn't pork have a pork or chop <laughs> or a roast chicken in front of me. So I, my choices were limited. But, I just uh, feel like, you know, yeah, like even if you're eating breakfast, you might be like, oh, maybe I'll try this on my sausage, or oh, maybe I'll try this on my bacon. But You're making me angry right now. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to try this on I'm turning gravy. Per- I'm, <laughs> I am fucking livid, and I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm going to make another bold statement. I'm 100% taking a stand on this. You have to try this on biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Damn it. I absolutely will not. <laughs> you will. I will no. slip it in. <laughs> That's a bridge way too far, my man. Next uh-huh. time we have dinner i'm slipping it in pink, there. if there's any pink a tinge or orange or any of that shit in my biscuit gravy no nope. pink <laughs> but i'm seeing fucking red right now no on a lighter note though uh i learned today this is considered a steak sauce which is interesting because as you had pointed out earlier eric on the bottle uh right under the giant 57 yeah it says add zest in large words to chicken and then underneath that, in smaller characters, it says steak and pork. No comma after the chicken. That's bad grammar, but I'll let that slide. What do they call that? The Oxford comma. The Oxford comma. I swear, there's there's a people, there's a movement to well, no, ban the Oxford comma. That's actually not an Oxford comma. Oh. Oxford comma is the one that comes before the and. This is the one after the chicken I'm saying there's no comma. Oh, that's a blatant, yeah. Yeah, so that's just a blatant grammar. Vi- actually, you know, I'm going to throw this in the fucking trash right now. It already it got me angry, even though I like it, and now they're misusing grammar yeah it was it was quite an arduous road to figure out whether or not this was a steak sauce or not but we made it you know we're here and uh and we're delighted to talk about it this evening and to my point we we did try it on chicken nuggets which is what i felt is more appropriate based on (laughs) (laughs) but no i was i didn't really this is still a steak sauce until i was reading it on wikipedia where it says it is considered a steak sauce but it is different than the other big three steak sauces that's interesting. What are the big three? Well, it's out of saying, fifty-seven flavors, right? In the U.S., in, well, no, that's not Heinz. Not a not a Heinz steak sauce. Just I mean, steak sauces in general. A fifty um, a a one has to be up there. It says three. And I'm reading straight from Wikipedia, so this is I'm not taking a hard stand on this. This is just what it says. <laughs> three major brands in the U.S. are Lee and Perrins, famously of Worcestershire sauce. Nice. Mm-hmm. The Heinz 
57, and Henderson's A1, huh? which I think we're all familiar with as well. And I think that that A1 also features prominently the Worcestershire notes as opposed to this, which I don't it really does. think it does. As, you think so? No, I mean, A1 has the Worcestershire notes. Oh, yeah. I no, mean, this is a different thing. This primarily, what I was getting out of it was a lot of vinegar and tomato, but not in a spicy way, though. Not like that. Well, again, reading from the Wikipedia here, it says Heinz once advertised the product as tasting like ketchup with a kick. Which I think is absolutely apropos. Yeah, borderline. I mean, yeah. It's it's. I mean, I, in my notes I said it was like mustard mixed with extra tangy ketchup. That's there. I hear you. Which I, I think you're spot on with that too. They do list one of the primary differences being a, a presence, a high presence of mustard seed. We haven't gotten around to the part where we read every ingredient in detail yet. Give us time. Oh, raisin juice from concentrate. I just caught that little blip. Raisins there. juice and apple juice. Was that one of your shockers? No, raisin, yeah. Raisin. Oh, it does have apple juice as well. It has apple juice as well. It's it crazy. says mustard flour. What could that possibly be? Is that like ground mustard? Yeah, I guess why not? Yeah. But what makes it flour? Wouldn't that just be mustard? Ground if, mustard? I mean, it's dry and powdery, maybe. I Unless guess. they mean the actual flowers of the plant. Ground mustard. Flour. As opposed to like, like the seed, maybe. Yeah, the same way you grind wheat. Seed. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, no, that is a seed, though, isn't it? God, we're grind the dumb. seed. So, but yeah, that, wouldn't yeah. that just be mustard powder? Yeah, could you imagine the apocalypse? <laughs> well, which one of these here you do? <laughs> How do I grind it into the mustard flour? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's weird, because you would think if there mustard is a seed, you grind it down, it would just be mustard powder. Right. I don't know. I mean, if it's mustard flour, I would yeah. assume it'd be... It seems like the same concept to me, just a whole other medium. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't we know. have really beat this horse dead and a half. But why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about... Some flavors you're tasting about a little bit about the actual sauce. What do you think, Tori? I think uh, you a little about me. Well, yeah. I, uh, that's funny you mentioned that because uh, my my very first note uh, as soon as my pen hit the paper, it said ketchupy, and I that mm. was that was my immediate distinction. Uh, just a, just another a couple of notes here. I, I said there was a bit of a smokiness. I thought for sure, okay. and I I know I've mentioned this before. I'm not highly sensitive to smoke. Um, so I, I think I may have picked up more than maybe your average bear. I don't know. E, you're giving me the eyeballs. I don't know. We'll see. A little bit. Yeah, I'm surprised smokiness. I don't, I, I tangy, vinegary. I don't get smoke out of it. Hmm. I, I noted there wasn't too much heat until the afterburners there. That yep. sort of hung with you a little bit, I, I thought. I thought there was an incredible presence of uh, a, a peppery, uh, a black peppery, not, yes. uh, not a hot peppery, mm-hmm. but that's certainly a black peppery. Um, I, my notes say here that I think is, is quite humorous. It, it says mild vinegar, and I uh, I made the edit after the fact, and I put not. Ah! And so I, as soon as I got that smell and I got it all up in my sinuses, it's hmm. very good. I don't think it's particularly wonderful. I, I wouldn't put it in my top ten. But now that it's here, it's convenient. It's on a nice hot chicken nugget. I think it's terrific. Yeah. Oh, boy. I, I say this a lot, but I fear as if I got a bottle of those... It, a bottle of that, excuse me, it would sit in my fridge for right. an unlimited amount of time, maybe two, th- two, three years possibly until someone got on my back about pitching it. Yeah, it, it was interesting that you mentioned it was one of the 57 flavors. I thought that was sort of neat. Would you guys do it on country fried steak? I know we talked oh, about various breakfast absolutely. foods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I think that, would, so. that would probably be... I was trying to think of breakfast foods that would work on it. Right. I think country fried steak would be a real good one. I, I um, think one ooh. of the benefits this sauce has is that it's got kind of that acidity to it, so it kind of it is cut down on like the greasier foods, which is why it works so well with biscuits and gravy piece of shit. But anyways, no, I think it would also work well with the uh, country fried steak, like you were saying. Yeah, that, that was the first thing that popped into my mind. I was trying to think of a breakfast food that would work for. I don't want to say that I would go out of my way for this sauce because I wouldn't, but because the fact that it was in front of me, and especially in a glass bottle, I thought it was nice. I thought it was yeah. very good. Boy, and almost to AP's defense after we gave him such a hard time, country fried steak usually comes slathered in breakfast in biscuit gravy. Right. Or, or sausage gravy. That's a good and, yeah. Uh, well, it's not they sausage probably, gravy. It's usually just a white gravy. I think is it just no, a white, well, they white the pepper gravy? Usually. I don't know. I, I equate white with sausage gravy. I well, no, too. it's the same base. They just don't put the sausage in. It's a milk gravy. That's fine. Hmm. Yeah. Peppery. But yeah, and, and I bet you that's probably why they put Heinz 57 sauce at a Waffle House for breakfast foods, possibly. I mean, I know well, they also serve lunch and dinner or right. not anytime, but, you know, I could see it. I could actually see it. And then, and with, even with the, the gravy on top of it. They do make a pretty good pork chop at Waffle House, too. And they have some steak dishes, too, for breakfast as well. Oh, yeah, true. I, I think you hit upon another key point there that I think there are probably a lot of people that like this sauce. I think there is a substantially smaller portion of the population that this is their favorite sauce. 
I think like you were saying, this might sit in someone's fridge, like mom and dad's fridge. It might sit in there for a couple of years. You might bust it out every once in a while. Maybe dad likes it on a steak. Maybe that was his family thing or something. But I don't see this going through in any kind of quantity. I don't see people buying this once a month or anything like that. I think uh, us dipping it copiously in the chicken nuggets, I think that's probably a rarity. I, I, I have to agree with you 100%. I think something along the lines of chicken nuggets, especially if you had someone younger right. in your household, um, maybe that was sort of sick of ketchup, maybe didn't care for ketchup for whatever reason or another. But if there, if you find yourself making a whole lot of fried dino chicken nuggets, oh, or, yeah. you know, whatever the case may be, I, I think this would be a, a, a big hit. In my heart of hearts, I feel as if steak sauce is sort of a cop-out. Uh, if, if the steak is done right, you certainly don't need any sauce to accompany it. Maybe some blue cheese, right. maybe a pat of butter, I mean, at... At best, you know, maybe some, maybe a nice piece of toast, mashed potatoes, whatever you want. But uh, some horseradish, some horse uh, horseradish is always a hit too. Yep. Yeah, especially yeah, if you have a nice um, prime, prime rib, rib. Yeah, absolutely, yep. something like that. But yeah, I don't know. I think steak sauce is sort of steak sauce is designed for the person who likes their steak well done. Exactly, that was my for point. Sure. I was going to, and that's not me. Yep, that'll never be me. I don't know if the point's been made before. I don't want to, you know, make you know, make a big spectacle of my weirdness, but I'll eat raw raw beef. Right. I, I know I get jerked around a lot about this, and that's okay. No, we'd like to give you. We'd like to give you a hard I time. I actually don't have a problem. I don't with have that. a problem with that at all. There's, yeah, just I mean, not my yeah, preference. I, oh, 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 I'm not offended. Trust me. You got to try harder than that. But I yeah. mean, everyone here at this table, all three of us, we all like our medium rare. Yeah, medium think, rare yeah. to rare steak. I mean, we we like it. That is my preference. And juicy and and yeah, you don't need steak sauce. No. Like my mom, on the other hand, Sweet Mammy P, for the listeners, she is firmly a go to a nice nice steakhouse, pick out your steak, have them burn the living shit out of it, <laughs> ask for steak sauce, Drown watch it. me cry. <laughs> because why do you pay for it when you get a, a hamburger or something for that for that sake? But you need dental records for the poor thing. She likes it, but uh, I don't understand it. To me, like you said, if you want to do that, let the steak speak for itself and right. get something else. Yeah, a hundred percent right. I mean, so but but however, I don't mean to take away from from that sauce because it, of course it does mention poultry on the front. Yep. I think we covered right. that. Um, one thing that I found particularly interesting was the recipe on the back, which I would put a lot of trust in otherwise. But uh, I got a lot of sweetness out of this particular sauce. And and E, I know you have a you have a sensitivity to sweetness. Yes. I, I know. I know we've covered. I know we've covered that in the past, but one thing that I find particularly interesting, and I, excuse me, I got to take my glasses off of this. Mr. Magoo can't see nothing. Got to go one-eyed without my glasses. So if, if four to six minutes, four to six minutes on an open grill after you give this a fresh coat of, of that sauce. Now, huh. correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that that sauce is sweet enough to want to char. Right. And, yeah, we discussed that it might get that kind of black and, and get some bitterness to it. Carbonization on yeah. the outside, almost. If you hit it long enough, it might caramelize and be really good. You go a little too four far to six past minutes. That. Yeah, four to six, I think, is a lot on a grill. That's a long time. Maybe if you're putting like a top rack or something, but I it don't see... specify that. Oh yeah, that's no. true. That's a good point. I think at a lower heat, this does kind of uh, the vinegar in it. I think. Um, right evaporates out and it gets a little bit thicker a little more but yeah there's definitely some sugars a little more like molasses and a molasses and it can kind of get a little burnt but right. it's nice when it thickens up because it does bring out actually you know when you burn sugars you actually kind of release more sweetness actually kind of like people who love that's science charred, i think right? people who love charred you know marshmallows or whatnot it doubles or, the sugar i just think it brings out the that flavor can kind of really come out. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, uh, the only thing that I'm trying to avoid is trying like a, a flaming chicken fireball, <laughs> right? You know, on 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 oh, my grill still, there. Girl. You know, I have a a sugar encoded chicken breast that's just a. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that that worried me. And usually, I put a lot of faith and a lot of stock in recipes that are on the back of containers. You know, whether yep. they be you know chocolate chip, you know, whatever. You They're know, you, you, you've seen them, right. sure, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, of course, I take credit for it accordingly. But yeah, I, that, I'd be interested to try it. I don't know. Man, there's certainly enough sauce to go around. I don't think we're going to finish this bottle anywhere near. Right. My, I mean, I can I can speak from experience. My parents have tried grilling pork chops and chicken with Heinz 57 sauce, and it, it does work. Oh. It does. So I was actually thinking maybe if you thinned it out more as like a marinade before, and we've used it as a marinade before. Okay, I could see thinned that thinned out as well because that the... would dilute the sugar as well. Which you know, and I think the vinegar you let it take its work. I think that would actually be better. Yeah, doing it that use way. apple cider vinegar and and cut down the Heinz fifty seven. Right, and you create a nice marinade out of it. 
I can definitely see that. Yeah, this was never a staple in my household. This was my first exposure to this, I think, was primarily Waffle House. We, um, uh, yeah, I grew up with it in, in the kitchen, so, or, you know, in my parents' refrigerator. We used it occasionally, and we brought it out for steak, but mostly pork chops and chicken, mostly. This does seem like an old man sauce to me. This doesn't seem... You were kind of touching on, like, maybe for kids or something. I think this would be too much flavor for a kid. I think this would be a bit of a zest bomb. I know a lot of younger kids are not into that strong flavors. I was going to say the opposite. I was going to say that really? this is a great introductory to kids when you mention kids. It's like, you know, hey, you want to try something more bold. You want, you know, maybe you're not into spicy ketchup yet because you're too young, but try this because this isn't going to, like, hit you over the head the way, like, a spicy ketchup will or, you know, really strong I feel like there's a lot of other sauces that are stronger. In fact, one of the things, one of my notes that I had on here was that the um, the sauce, the sauce. Do you need to take your glasses off? Yeah, yeah, almost here. <laughs> the, the struggle is real, dude. Close one eye. Dude, I get you. I, now I, I, it's like bat life. I'm, I'm clicking at shit. There's a strong <laughs> vinegar flavor to the sauce. And yes. I almost feel like it has a habit of cleaning your palate on the back end to the point where you like don't, a lot of the flavors take it off. Like like they're the I feel like it's very flavorful up front and then it and then it has like almost no finish to it so it almost leaves you wanting to have another bite or another you know it leaves you wanting more. Oh, I see what you're saying. It like primes you for the next. Okay, it primes you. Yeah, it almost like I mean, I to me like I almost wish a sauce like a chipotle or something that has a little right. more spice or a little more thickness to it that hmm. lingers longer. Okay, this doesn't linger for to me. It just hmm. was you know it's like a zest bomb up front and then it's kind of like it just fades out real Interesting. quick. Interesting. Hmm. Fr- frankly, I think I disagree with that statement. I think you're getting hit with a large amount of vinegar up front, but I do definitely get that black pepper heat uh, that I think does kind of linger on your tongue a little bit, and it's not overwhelming, but I definitely think it has some staying power to it. That being said, I do think like the vinegar and the acidity helps to clear like fattiness off your tongue. Like if you like I said, if you're eating it on something a little bit greasier, I think it can provide some nice balance to that. Yeah, I think we were all, you know, I think maybe that's why we're all kind of more in favor of it now is that we are kind of getting to be old men. We've got to take our glasses <laughs> off to read the bottle and uh, maybe that's why. But oh, oh, to your point earlier, Tori, I wanted to mention also that uh, you were talking about recipes on bottles. And I think that's kind of one of the old classic jokes is that, you know, people make uh, chocolate chip cookies and they want to know where they got that good recipe. And it's just that Toll House standard recipe. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it's on the back the of the best. chocolate chip bag. It's like <laughs> the best co- chocolate chip recipe. It's not hard to find. Who's got it figured out? The people who spent $10 billion in food science to figure it out. They probably know. Heinz, I think they got, I think they've figured out a single good recipe if they're putting one on the back of the bottle. I don't know. I mean, I would be interested to try. It seems unconventional to me. I'm going to put it that way. Not that I'm a food scientist expert, please. But Michelin I, stars, though, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But to slather it on and then put it on open flame right. is reckless. Yep. I think you would want to keep a uh, definitely a close eye on that. It's it's interesting, too, when we're thinking about, like, talking about the, the thickness of it and and the flavor profile. Oddly enough, my mind went straight to, like, mcdonald's barbecue sauce consistency wise i could definitely see that consistency and even just like like barbecue sauce i don't know like sweetness like, uh, sweet and tangy and like you know it's just like it kind of is like a barbecue sauce in a way right but it's not you know it's it's an interesting uh, little unique profile i flavor. actually think it's close to me i think it's actually closer to a barbecue sauce than it would be to a ketchup i definitely you get that tomato puree but i don't think i was getting as much sweetness as you guys were either but i think that to me i was getting more of that kind of vinegary taste up front i was actually pleasantly surprised i hadn't had this on chicken before i could definitely eat that straight up with chicken nuggets and enjoy the hell out of it i think for yeah, some vinegar variety. zest you know it's got tang it's got the mustard mm. you definitely taste uh onion garlic you know the normal spices it does kind of taste like it's uh to me it's kind of like they turned the flavor up to 11 overall it's i think a pretty well balanced sauce would this now, here's a question. Would you guys, since this was apparently intended as a steak sauce, over, say, I know we didn't try it today, but over, say, like an A1, do you think this would be any better on beef? No, it's not even, say, steak. Maybe, like, even a burger or a beef patty or something? I'm going to go with no. I have I have very little respect for steak sauces, <laughs> pretty much in general. I don't see a need for them. I mean, unless you maybe get a steak salad or something like that. Okay. Maybe. I like to put some on a burger sometimes. Sometimes. I don't know. Not all the time. A1, I think, would be better on beef than this. 
sauce. And I I like A1's flavor profile. But again, as we all discussed, if you have a steak pr- properly prepared, you don't want a sauce right. touching it at all. <laughs> no. One thing I like to do is sometimes like I'll have a burger and I maybe will put some A1 on the burger and maybe a little sprinkle of like some gorgonzola cheese on top. And I think that's a delightful pairing. Uh, this That'd sauce, I think, has no place on beef. No. I think it, to me, solely, I can see this on chicken, possibly pork. pork. Um, no question chicken. I think oh, that, yeah. This is made for chicken. To me, this is a chicken sauce. Yeah. It's it's really good on pork chops, too. It really is. I think, personally. Well, we don't like to count your personal opinions and things, so. But, coming around to your personal opinion, E, let's start with you. If you had to give this sauce a rating, and like I said, we've said that Heinz ketchup we're calling a five, and this being another Heinz product, this should be an interesting comparison. You want to give us kind of like a little bit of a... I don't think we need to do a heat rating on this, right? This is just a straight Person. up. No, I don't think I don't so. Think so. I, don't think heat, I don't think heat is the intent of this sauce. So why don't you just give us a straight up 1 to 10 rating of this Heinz 57 sauce. I like that it's bold. It's bold in its flavors. It's It's got that vinegar zing. Um, I think it's like we had mentioned before. It's like ketchup plus something. It's, it's, it's a little more. It's definitely more flavorful than ketchup. In my mind, it's going to be a higher number i'm gonna probably say it. i'm gonna give it a six i'm not going crazy i just think like i said for me it just tapers off on the back end and kind of like i wish it had more sticking power really or something more to it i'm not sure what it's missing but it's it's good up to a point of just being good <laughs> to me it great. sounds like if you're describing uh, a woman or a chicken you're saying it's all breast and no ass <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> no one liked that comparison come on now wow TG, what were your... Uh, Shall I weigh in on it please? all? Please. Oh, boy. Wait, hold on. What was your actual rating? Six. Oh, six? Hmm. Piece of shit. Okay. I can draw a lot of parallels between what you and I are thinking here. Boy. Yeah. It. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was good. It, it was in front of me. I think the medium that it was on was terrific. Chicken. I think it was made for chicken. I, I don't think this would be any good on pork or beef, um, particularly at at all. I can't imagine a single cut of beef that this would work on for for what it's worth. Now that my brain is sort of moving in that direction, that you know, if you put a, if you put something like this on a fillet or or, or a prime beef, I'm, I'm gonna Shame. bust I'm gonna bust in that restaurant. <laughs> I think chicken is is really its place, and I'm delighted that um, that we tried it on on chicken today because I think we really, if it's going to excel, it, it's going to excel there. So yeah. you know that that's really it. So it, and I think I mentioned before, I wouldn't certainly go out of my way for this, right? The Heinz, of course, is very near dear to my heart. You know, I I could throw a rock on a good day, and and hit the Heinz factory. You know, from from where I grew up. So you know, I, you know, I, I, that may or may not weigh into the the ultimate decision. But dang, e, I'm I'm with you there, man. I'm maybe a seven at best. It's it's very very ketchupy. Yep. I, I almost can't remove that that from the ketchup. I, I know you mentioned a lot of. Missing a lot of the, the puree. I, I got a lot of tomato. I, I got a lot of ketchupy sweetness that we talk about a lot. And uh, I, it was good. You know, the smokiness and the spiciness and the vinegar, the, the up on the vinegar more so than the ketchup gives it gives it a boost for certain. So I, I think I'm going to land pretty solidly at a, uh, boy, maybe a 6.97. Ah, nice. <laughs> Very good. It'll fit nicely into my spreadsheet. And, uh, you know, interesting, even fries. You know, we didn't really talk about this, but if you had if you had French fries in front of you, and you had ketchup and Heinz yeah, 57. Maybe from the vinegar aspect. I think I might even enjoy enjoy dipping my fries in this and over ketchup. I think a hot, greasy fry that could work definitely. Uh, like a cold McDonald's fry, that sounds gag inducing. But cold those McDonald's are fries are bad. Gag inducing to begin <sighs> yeah. with, man. I don't know. I, I can't help but disagree with you. If if I had, I think I know what direction you're going in, like a cabbage fratch type of fry, like a fresh yes, cut, fresh yeah, cut, yeah, yeah. Hot, greasy, yeah. yeah, greasy type fry. There's malt vinegar. That does vinegar right. better than this does vinegar. I'm saying you sit down at that picnic table and there's ketchup or this. Oh, well, okay. Well, you're gonna choose this. If there's this or <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> let me get through my let me get through my Goop. rating first really quick because I'm gonna be brief about this, but I do have a point I want to circle back around to on your malt vinegar there. I think initially my my thoughts on this sauce were a little bit lower today. I think particularly kind of spiked it for me, so I'm gonna try to be fair about it but man it really hit the spot on those chicken nuggets i would eat a whole batch of chicken nuggets i'd eat a brood if you would of chicken nuggets with this um sauce on it. i think it was very good tonight maybe it's just because i'm starving but i think that had something to do with did it. you have dinner no okay i'm not eating yet today so that I think <laughs> weigh that, that into to the conclusion influenced something but no i uh previously when i've had this sauce 
like you said, on the on something savory like the the biscuits and gravy, kind of take it or leave it. I'll put like two or three pea-sized drops on a dish like that and just kind of spread it around just for a little bit of flavor enhancement, similar to how you might season something with salt or pepper. It's still not acceptable. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I think it's going to... You know what? I hope the people chime in and I hope they flame your ass for that opinion. Wow. I hope the Southerners come in. It seems like a Southern sauce to me, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, Heinz 57. It only has the Keystone label. Right, yeah. yeah I don't, but I don't know where he gets particular, that. <laughs> no, no, no. But this particular type of thing, though, seems... Maybe it's because Waffle House seems southerny to me in any case i'm gonna say for this after tonight prior to this i probably would have said four out of ten tonight i'm gonna go ahead and say seven out of ten so yeah. you're right in line with me then well i'm you know 0. 0.03 points higher than you but yes i said 6.9 nice I or said, seven. Oh, i thought you said 6.97 i thought i heard seven too i didn't hear the or seven oh, you're saying after 0. You pro- 0. 0.69 uh, uh, i see i mean we can go 6.98 would be an acceptable <laughs> score no if you we killed go. it now so Okay, well, in any case, I'm going to say seven. Seven. But I did want to circle back to your point about the vinegar. And the question I've always had, maybe this is like a food, maybe a food scientist can chime in and answer this. Why is there no sauce that is just thick vinegar? Oh, that's a really good question. And a lot of times when I find myself with those greasy fries and malt vinegar, I'll take two or three pumps. My fries will be thoroughly saturated. And I'll think to myself, Wow, this is really going to be great. Uh, and then I go and sit down and I try it. I'm, you know, I'm getting a lot of salt, a lot of right. salt, and no vinegar. And then exactly. I go back and I'll do one, two, I'll do six more. Yep. And then I'll give it, a, I'll give it. A yep. wh- I don't know where the hell the vinegar goes. It all sits at the bottom. There, yeah. And it just you never really get enough of it. And I've always wondered, like, if you ever, I don't know if you guys like to cook a lot, make sauces and stuff, but something you can do pretty easily is just take like some cornstarch and mix it in with a sauce. And it will immediately thicken it up. Give it a thickness, yeah. And but you have know, you tried that with vinegar? I mean, no, vinegar I is a natural acid; it breaks down. I don't. I mean, to make vinegar thick, I don't think it's chemically possible. You'd have to just like saturate. I don't know, paper towels in it, and, and then just try and serve it. Okay, as that. we're gonna I mean, try this because I don't. Th- I think you're fucking wrong, and I'm willing to take a strong stance on that too. Because here's the thing: lots of sauces that are thick are primarily vinegar i.e. ketchup this sauce they have a lot of vinegar in them and i think if that was the the defining factor i think that would change that i, I definitely think we need to try this now and just thicken up some straight up vinegar we need to start wearing lab coats and do experiments and shit like I, that. I know if That'd they can interesting i mean why not like a little a little thicket i mean uh, i think you'd look good in a lab coat i always did in high school <laughs> and you high school do. lab classes <laughs> but uh no i i'm, I'm going to challenge a food scientist come out with just like a straight up thickened something maybe this consistency even of a malt vinegar it doesn't need all the extra flavor just hit me with that vinegar you ever see thick water no that's weird yes man. i've seen it like for old well, folks for old folks with thick oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like that jello stuff water. for them to hydrate yeah i have seen that now that you mentioned yeah. it they put that thickener well that's what i'm saying there with science i guarantee we can thicken up some vinegary well it's got acid in it it'll dissolve everything it's ever I'm been saying it's gonna dissolve everything i just um, i just think it might be really i just don't think it'd be good I think you're fucking wrong. I think it is going to be perfectly. I think it would be good. Why would it not be good? The I mean, consistency all these wise? others. Not no, not consistency wise. I just you know, if you just take something that's so monotone, one thing, malt vinegar, and just make it thicker without adding something else to it a little bit. I uh, fucking disagree. I don't know. All right, it might be interesting. We should try it. We should try it. I think we can definitely give it a shot. You know, I'm not a food scientist, but I'll take it a whack until one of you steps up, food scientists. Anyway, so any uh, any kind of like closing thoughts on this sauce there? I, like I said, I think we I think that's fair. I think seven is about where it belongs. I personally, I think I'd rather have this on some chicken nuggets than just a straight up ketchup, at least for tonight. I can't say that's how I would feel a week from now. Maybe I try it and I hate it, but right now that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, I fully agree. It's I, I think it's better than ketchup. I mean, just slightly. Yeah, I'm with you. I it, I, I think it's a, a little bit slightly better than ketchup. It certainly wouldn't be my go to sauce. It's not awful, and, and and now that I think about it and how much I hate ketchup and looking at it comparatively speaking to this, but I don't think this necessarily deserves an 8 by that same token. Well, you didn't give it an 8. I know. That's oh. why it doesn't deserve an 8. It doesn't. Okay. No. And, you know, oh, and when I said that I grew up with the sauce, I mean, it, it's one of those sauces that sat in my fridge and sat in oh, oh, my parents' right. fridge. You know? that's, all, that's what I'm saying. I, oh, yeah. Like we, we touched on, I think that's its purpose, is to be the ghost in the fridge. Well, I think that about sums up our uh, review of this Heinz 57 sauce 
a classic. I think I said this has been around for like 90 years or something like that. 100. 100 years. Oh, 100? Okay, well, maybe I'm reading a dated post then. I'm Over 100 years. Over 100 years. Wow. Just like you, E. Just like me. When is it nap time again, E? Soon. soon as Real soon. Podcast, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Tori, you want to send us off with any uh, closing thoughts there? Yeah, thanks. Of course, we talked about Heinz 57, the 57 meaning. I don't know if we hammered on this or not, but being one of 57. So I think that implies a certain uniqueness. And uh, so I, I want everyone to think about, you know, that, that uniqueness and apply it to themselves because I think you're very unique. And I think a lot of people out there love you for that unique. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for listening. E, you got anything, any words of wisdom you want to share with us? Anything from your personal book of... Uh knowledge you knew this was coming piece I of shit coming. I, I, oh! know, I had something that i had forgotten it now no you ain't done yet say something nice say something nice dedicate this to your mom or something you piece oh, of shit jesus i'm not dedicating this to my mom why not something not something she my family really really loves heinz 57 not not gonna <laughs> They still have their same model from all those years ago <laughs> oh i know it's some say it raised me more than my own father <laughs> I would like to say a quick shout out to all the people affected by the hurricane that happened this week. Very well done, E. I'd like to, you know, let them know that our thoughts and wishes are with them. And it it was a heck of a hurricane. I, actually, I'm surprised we didn't talk about. Well, there was it two earlier. of them, wasn't there? Two. Well, there's two hurricanes. I think they merged into like one category four. M and L straight up the uh, Mississippi River, and they were like they showed the destruction afterwards. And I was like, and they're like, we dodged a bullet. And I'm thinking that's dodging a bullet. Holy shit. <laughs> Could have been real bad. So, yeah, some of the, I mean, it was six people lost their lives. Chemical plant blew up. I'm surprised we didn't talk about this actually earlier. I wanted to bring it up earlier and we just didn't. So. In all your travels, have you ever lived down in the Gulf? No. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up this week for our review. Thanks for everyone listening, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Wow, what a show. Thanks for coming and listening to us today. We really appreciated it. Feel free to leave us a rating, a review. That would be really great. Let us know how we're doing. Why don't you come and see us on Instagram? We are Sauce Spoken Official. We would love to hear from you. And shoot us an email, please. We're dying for it. This is Sauce Spoken at gmail.com. And finally, shoot us a tweet. We like to be tweeted once in a while, you know, especially my man E. Hit us at Sauce Spoken. Thank you for listening once again, and we'll see you next week.